Well, it's been a long, long time since the last review. It may have been the Quiet Place? Was that the last one we did? So since then, I've missed reviewing Solo, Jurassic World, The Incredibles 2, Deadpool 2, and a smorgasbord of other things. But there was one film that made me want to come back. A film that's being praised as one of the most exciting, well-crafted, and all-round thrilling action movies of, of not just the year but of like the decade i was so excited to see it and i finally seen it and i just had to to share my thoughts with you and that film is extinction Yeah, I, I could have done Mission Impossible, but that review would have just evolved into me providing an itemized list of everything the film does well. It would have just been, this was good, this was good, this was good, because it was fucking fantastic, and you should see Mission Impossible fall out, like, right away. You should not see Extinction, because it is a patience-testing bore. For context, this is, like, the latest orphaned blockbuster to be dumped on Netflix. It's a Michael Pena and Lizzie Kaplan starring alien invasion flick, and it found itself in a state of limbo earlier this year after its original distributors, uh, Universal, decided that it was a bag of wank. Um, in what is becoming an increasingly frequent occurrence, a certain streaming giant took notice of the situation and promptly came to the rescue. Thank you, Netflix. So they, they added this, uh, this pile of crap to their uh, growing collection of rejects uh, alongside the similarly lacklustre Cloverfield Paradox, uh, Spectral. To, to quote um, Mark Zuckerberg from The Social Network, it doesn't take a forensics team to get to the bottom of what happened here. Obviously Universal commissioned what they expected to be a tantalising slice of science fiction. It's based on the, an original screenplay from the Oscar-nominated writer of Arrival, and it's got a promising up-and-coming up director in uh, Ben Young attached. And it has a fairly interesting premise. Uh, we'll, we'll get onto that, actually, because that's uh, a controversial issue in of itself. So it had encouraging credentials, but I think somewhere along the line, uh, someone at the studio went, oh, hang on, we've just wasted all our money on something that sucks. I'm sure they were thrilled when Netflix came along offering a generous sum to take to take their garbage off their hands for them. It was definitely a saving grace because without labouring the point, this glacially paced and utterly generic misfire would have tanked hard at theatres. So in a nutshell, it tells the story of Peter, who is played by Michael Peña. Uh, he is, he's a family man who is afflicted by recurring visions of an impending alien attack. Sometimes these fantasies plague his sleep, sometimes they interrupt his workplace daydreams, and often they just come out of the blue entirely. And this causes him a great deal of anxiety, which in turn takes its toll on his domestic life with his family. Indeed, there's ongoing friction within the household as Peter ends up inadvertently neglecting his children and pushing his loving wife away because he's so preoccupied with whether or not aliens are going to be invading. So, so far, it's so close encounters. And in response, his, his wife, which is uh, Lizzie Kaplan, decides to seek out psychiatric help, despite the fact that he says he doesn't need it, because he thinks that these aren't delusions, but instead they are omens or, or premonitions of something that is actually going to happen. So from that setup, as I said, you think that this could go down a similar path to Close Encounters, charting a marital breakdown or exploring the impact that seismic global events can have on domestic life. Or it could go down like a kind of psychodrama thriller route, wherein there's like a, a mystery as to whether or not Michael Kipenya's character is insane or if he is genuinely experiencing prophecies that are going to come true and you know and it could have been a mystery where you spend the whole film trying to figure out what what's happening here either would have been more interesting than what the film is i said that this has a decent premise and what i meant by that was it, it seems to set up a decent premise like it's it's weird the first 20 minutes of the film is about exactly what i just said 
And then, and I hesitate to use the word spoiler because the entire marketing gives this away. And like I said, it happens 20 minutes into the film. So, spoiler, I guess, if you care. But 20 minutes in, they just confirm that, no, 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 there are aliens and they attack Earth. So you lose all of that potential, or you know, any kind of ambiguity, any kind of stuff about the family dynamic out the window. And it devolves into this really, really generic action film. It's, it's bizarre. It sets up creative avenues that it explores for the briefest sliver of a runtime, and then just abruptly jettisons them, and the cerebral premise devolves into something that is thoroughly unengaging, as the family basically have to fight their way out of an apartment complex that is being besieged by alien creatures. It's kind of like the raid crossed with attack the block only much less enjoyable than that makes it sound. I mean, there's nothing inherently bad about switching from like a slow burn, intelligent sci-fi to dumb schlock. But in this instance, the film is doing itself a massive disservice by going all in on the spectacle because it doesn't do the spectacle very well at all. The, the pyrotechnics and the set pieces are bland and cheap looking and also very cookie cutter. You've seen them all before. There's no original ideas. They're also really tensionless, and the shootouts feel murky, poorly lit, and confusingly edited. So what's the point of doing spectacle if you can't even see it? Meanwhile, there's a distinct lack of fresh ideas, especially when it comes to the aliens, with the director just pilfering liberally from the likes of Predator, District 9, and War of the Worlds. Worse still, you can't feel connected to the stony human characters, as they exhibit only mild concern when faced with extraterrestrial threats. It's just the, the performers look so disengaged, but every single time they see like something horrifying or, or, or inspiring, they're just like, oh, look, an alien. Uh, this is especially true of the kids, who also seem to have no self-preservation instincts whatsoever, putting themselves in harm's way on numerous occasions in order to save a stuffed teddy bear. They introduce this teddy bear earlier on in the film. The little girl's like really attached to it. And the dad has to like fix it, fix his voice component. And then later on when the aliens attack, she leaves it and the camera lingers on it. And I'm like, if someone risks their lives for that fucking teddy bear, I'm gonna I'm gonna flip. And not only does someone risk their life for the teddy bear, they do it three times over the course of the film. So the, the kids are really, they're quite irritating, the kids' characters in this, because they just have, they just keep doing stupid things to put themselves in peril. And even the typically reliable talents of Kaplan and Peña fail to get you invested, because they just look so disinterested, sporting blank facial expressions and really low-energy performances. All in all, by gradually giving way to a hodgepodge of recycled tropes and uninspired visuals, Extinction gives you no real incentive to persevere. And that's a shame, because this has a legitimately interesting third act twist. It's quite smart, and it could have salvaged this mess had it arrived earlier on, but it's way too little too late, way too little too late, and it's such a shame, because I was thinking earlier on, like, wow, I could not care less about what's going on in this film, this is so by the numbers and generic, but, but when it gets to this, like, final third, you go, oh, why couldn't the film have been this all along? I think if, if you've switched off by that point, then the filmmakers only have themselves to blame, so, yeah, it's a shame. Keep them coming, Netflix.